Yeah, baby! She started up. We're actually just going to uh, get a new car battery. Mine has not been starting very well. 39 degrees out. So that's why I think it's hard this time. But we're still gonna go get one because it is not reliable. Video is a little different than uh, most uh, as I was not able to actually get the shot on film. He kind of snuck in behind me, not able to swing the camera around. I was just able to uh, get the shot off uh, as I was in a new stand too that we didn't trim. So that made things difficult. I had one window and thankfully I got that window. Uh, so you'll, you'll have uh, the audio with this video. We'll work on that for next time. Uh, hopefully I can uh, lay down some more footage for you guys. but. Just wanted to preface it with that. So as you guys may or may not know, uh, this is deer we had lots of history with. Uh, I think about four years of pictures. Um, ever since one, we think he was three and a half. Because uh, we estimate that this uh, particular deer, game time decisions is what we call him, uh, to be six and a half years old. special about him never is going to blow up to be anything but just an old mature deer um, so it, it was fun chasing that's for sure so the first initial encounter uh, with this deer was actually by my dad who saw him during bow season uh, I believe back in 2000, 2015 if I'm correct um, he had him come by his stand while he was archery hunting and he didn't know if it was, he was a shooter or not. He kind of came back that night and kind of told us the story. He said it's going to be a game time decision if you should kind of shoot him. Uh, it's a, on the fence or pass him if you get a good enough look. If he comes quick enough, he might take a shot at him, especially in gun season. So that's where the, the name game time decision came from. It kind of stuck. Watched him for years after that we could kind of always tell it was him based off his uh, just mainframe eight but very narrow crab claws uh, at the end um, and then also the very short brow time so that was kind of how we um, knew it was him year to year and coming into the 2019 season he was obviously on the radar uh, we knew he's been around for a while and he was never never blew up to anything special but I was fortunate enough to see the trail camera pictures come in early season and that kind of got me excited for the, the archery season there. But when I did get out, I was fortunate enough to uh, be in the right spot at the right time and caught him kind of cruising, uh, chasing a doe. So the rest is history as they say. But.
I was standing up watching this uh, deer work work the water hole and mock scrape, and he I heard twig snap behind me, and he kind of looked the back, and then I looked back, and I just saw antlers. I didn't know exactly who it was, but I had a feeling it could have been him. So I turned around, I uh, did a 180 to grab my bow. He got behind a tree, I drew back. He got to my spot, I, I stopped him, and a uh, shot. Meh. kind of hit right behind the shoulder and there wasn't much penetration uh, with that shot there's a lot of arrow sticking out and I could see that green luminoc pretty easy uh, but it stuck in them to back out and I replayed the shot over my head like we gave him a couple hours and then we gathered everybody and took up the trail right away good blood you could kind of tell he was stumbling he wasn't too far down the trail about 70 yards uh, just down that bowl he died right away he I was just excited. I mean, we all of us are there. All of us knew about him, and this is kind of finally like end the story. To get your hands on him with your family and friends around you is a, is a great feeling, obviously. So that was a really good end to the story, and all the nerves flew away once we saw that blood. But I hope you enjoyed the the pictures and the, the audio that I have, and uh, hopefully it can bring down uh, some more footage for you guys in the future so stay tuned and always remember to rip them.